Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship and sex alchemist, Milica Jelanić. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. Here we are today on this super rainy evening in Ontario, in my area of Ontario, Canada, I'm watching the rain come down and I'm thinking about all things spring as you know, those April showers bring May flowers. We've got May coming up in a few days and I'm like, just kind of, I kind of get excited by these energies of rain. They're so cleansing and clearing. And so today's show is all about spring cleaning for your relationships not just like your intimate sexual relationships, but all relationships. It's a funny thing as you start to clean out sometimes even friendships or old relationships, you start to notice that there's room. There's even energetically, there sometimes becomes space, space in your being, space in your life. And, and it offers something else to all the other relationships that are left. As I was looking at this topic today and kind of like contemplating, how do I approach this topic? How do I look at this from a spring cleaning perspective? I started to go, okay, what do I like to spring clean the most? I like to spring clean, summer clean, fall clean my closets, all my clothes. I don't have a lot of clothes. I'm not like a clothing collector, but I like to go through them on a regular basis and evaluate what's working for me, what's not working for me what's you know bringing me money what's not and how do i know any of that it's because i just start asking questions to these items like hey you're gonna make me some money and if the feeling or sensation is yes then i keep it also joy like does this bring me joy and i love marie kondo if any of you have listened to my show before you know that i love marie kondo i also love the home edit as well and they do great different approaches to cleaning and clearing your space. And I think we can take a lot of those approaches and apply them to things like relationships. So when I was looking at this, I was like, how would I spring clean my closet? Because that's the thing that I like to spring clean the most and the most often. And I looked at it as what do I do with my piles, my piles of clothes and how do my clothes relate to relationships? And before I was on the show uh, this afternoon, I was kind of typing out some notes just so I could have some clarity with this show too so I could have some direction <laughs> sometimes I just have no direction and this time I wanted a little direction and I was sharing with my child as they were laughing at my concept but going yeah that's interesting that's an interesting idea um, but how does what you're saying relate to people so then I took all those ideas that I was saying and related it to different relationships and uh, it made sense so if it makes sense to a 14 year old I think it's going to make sense to you guys too although sometimes I don't know 14 year olds are pretty freaking wise for those of you who are brand new to the show just know that I love talking about all things sex pleasure relationships especially on the show I talk about them from the perspective of biology sociology psychology from anthropological perspectives as well and I like to look at and approach things from as many different perspectives as I can possibly come across and so for today I'm looking at relationships from the perspective of what if creating space will actually create a sort of a sense of a of a an opening like clearing out old relationships and all that jazz what if it creates space for new people to come through on places like social media like facebook you're allowed 5000 friends so sometimes people start doing this clearing out in order to allow room for new more active uh, players to come into their life that will come and actually interact with them and to me it's very similar in real life is are you ready to clear some people out that are maybe not so active in your life? And this is going to be very much, very much related to closing. So I hope you enjoy this episode tonight. Um, if you do, and you actually really like my approaches to things and you kind of appreciate my weird, wacky sense of humor and my way of uh, 
coaching, you're more than welcome to connect with me even for a few minutes um, in order to have a, uh, a little meet and greet and see if I would work for you as a sex and intimacy coach. I also work uh, with people with their relationships as well. So that's another option. And I have lots of classes and courses and especially lots of classes and courses coming up in the fall. So stay tuned for that as well. And so for today, how do I actually clean the closet of my friendships? I thought, what would I do? If I was Marie Kondo, I would take all my clothes from everywhere in the house, which means I've got some in my um, office closet. I have a space that has like fancy coats that I don't usually wear. <laughs> so I would take those. I have some functional jackets that I have in my front hall uh, kind of uh, closety thing that I've got there. Closety thing, that's a word. And we've got clothes in different places in the house. And so what I would do is I would gather it all. And this is the Marie Kondo approach. You just gather it all and you look at how much of it you've got. And I love her approach because it kind of gets you to grasp how much you've actually got going on. And when I look at it from this perspective and I look at friends, uh, relationships, loverships, past lovers, um, all of this sort of energy of all these people, and I look at like who's taking up space in my life and who's not just taking up space, but who's contributing in that space, who's actually contributing to creation of my life and their life through our knowing each other, communicating or co-creating together. Um, and sometimes they could be people that I have not even spoken to in like 10 years and they still contribute to my life. And it's really kind of cool to see how that happens. And then there are people that I might talk to on a regular basis and there isn't so much of a contribution and that's okay too. However, it's good to get clear on it so that, you know, you are investing your time because this is pretty much what we have the commodity of on this planet is you got time between birth and death we have time to invest in things and that time can be invested in things that bring you joy or not. So what would you like to invest your time in with the people in your life? And let's look at, for example, when I was thinking about this pile of clothes slash pile of people that are around, um, let's look at the ones that no longer fit. And so when I said that to my child, I was like, so we got the pile of ones that no longer fit. And they're like, well, how do you relate that to people? I'm like, well, there are ones that no longer fit. So when we look at that from, from a people perspective, they might have interests that you no longer have. They might have beliefs that don't jive with yours and they want to fight you on them all the time. They might have, they, they just might not be available at all. So there's different reasons why people walk out of or leave relationships, um, several different reasons why people will do that. Sometimes it's a sense of betrayal. Sometimes there's just like no feeling of connection anymore. Sometimes there's been drifting apart. Sometimes people don't feel like they've, that they're, you know, that it's two-sided, like they haven't invested any time in it or whatever it happens to be. You will have a certain number of things in those pile of friends when you look at them cumulatively that you go, hmm, those no longer fit. So when something no longer fits, what can you do with it? Um, sometimes you might have those, like I might have like these size eight pants that I absolutely love that no longer fit and haven't fit for like seven years. And I look at them and I'm like, I love these pants. <laughs> And one day, if I don't ever wear them, maybe somebody else will wear them. <laughs> um, so when it comes to people, you might have some people you're like, I really love this person. I don't have a lot in common with them, but I'm going to like, I'd like to keep them in my life regardless. Um, they don't necessarily fit, but you never know. There might be something. I don't want to burn this bridge. So you might have some of those in that pile that you don't want to burn the bridge with. And you can actually just make this list of you know, I'd start with 10 or 15 people. You don't want to overwhelm yourself with every single person you're friended with on social media from all your platforms and just like go, the what just happened? You don't want to get overwhelmed. So start with like 10 or 15 people that you can come up with off the top of your head and just see, do they fit? 
Are they like clothing that no longer fits? Are they kind of out of fashion and out of style for you? Are they no longer a fashion or a style that you like? As I'm talking about this, this sweater is probably, I don't know, eight or nine or 10 years old and it's so comfy. And I keep it around because not only is it comfy, it fits. It fits, it's comfy, it's practical. And I have a lot of friends who fit, they're comfy and they're practical. And those to me are my everyday super friends that usually stick around for a very long time. And I have, and I feel like super blessed that I have clothes that have fit me for years. And I feel super blessed that I have friends that have fit me for years. Um, some of you are right now in the chat room. So thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, and some of you are not right now in the chat room and that's okay too. <laughs> so it's, um, it's kind of fun to look at it and go, does this fit? You know, is it uncomfortable? If I put on this relationship, how does my body react? Is my body like going, oh, this feels awful. It feels itchy. It feels uncomfortable. It doesn't fit me. Cool. Take it off. It's okay. Put it aside. And then also when you put these relationships aside, just like the Marie Kondo styles, and I'm all about her style, say thank you for them. Thank you. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful you were in my life and I'm letting you go now. So you may make, you know, you may write to them. You may make messages. You may not. You may just choose. You're letting it go. And there never needs to another, necessarily be another word. And that's cool too. And there may be those things that sit in that pile, like my size eight pants that I think are so cool that I love so much that sit there and you're like, I wonder if they'll fit again. And every once in a while you go and you try it on. And you're like, oh, yeah, that still doesn't fit. Okay, well, I'll come back to that later. Maybe it'll fit again. Um, it fit really well for a while. And then, man, my butt looked great in those. And then nowhere, it just out of nowhere, those pants did not fit anymore. And I've got relationships like that too. It's like, they really fit really well for like a while. And then it was like, they do not fit at all anymore. What just happened? Okay. Well, it's not that different. Honestly, we take it personally. We take it like it's so, um, so personal, like this doesn't fit. Well, why there must be something wrong with me that I no longer fit for you. Like, you know, somebody else could be putting you aside because you no longer fit for them. It's not necessarily personal. It just doesn't fit. You're trying to put on underwear that's way too big or way too small. It just doesn't fit. Time to check out the underwear. Honestly, when it comes to underwear, just check it out. Don't hold on to that for too long because why? Eventually the elastic goes, so don't hold on. But um, that's just another, that's just a side note, guys. It's just like, if your underwear doesn't fit, just check it. Buy some new underwear. Okay. So <laughs> on that conversation, what fits? So when you look at the fit, you want to look at certain things that go along with that fit. Like when you put it onto your body, when you put that relationship onto your body, what is it that has your body feel excited to be with that item, right? So with this one, there's coziness, there's warmth. Um, it kind of helps me feel like nurtured, I don't know, feels nurturing. So when I have relationships too, that are kind of comfy and warm and nurturing, I'll probably say yes to them. And I like them. And I like that sense of that, even if they don't necessarily make me look super sexy or they, they're a little bit like misshapen, but they're super comfy, I'll take it. I'll have it because a lot of my friendships are a little misshapen and strange. And most people would look at them and go, you have these people as your friends? Or they would say, why do they have you as their friend? Because I'm definitely a character. So I think it's quite fun to kind of evaluate these things on a regular basis to create space in your life, whether you're evaluating your closets or you're evaluating other things. It's uh, super fun to be able to look at this stuff and, um, and just see whether these things fit for you. I have a few more categories for you guys to look at too, and I'd really love to share them with you. I know for some of you, you're listening on Facebook Live, and I would love for you to come on over to Inspired Choices Network. So inspiredchoicesnetwork.com, you can join us in the chat room and ask questions, but you can also just come on in and listen. We're also on a, a like a gazillion other platforms, so you'll find us in a lot of different places. So now, 
When we come back, we're going to look at some other things, like those vintage pieces that you keep around because they're sexy. And it's like a Chanel vintage dress. And you're just like, everybody needs a Chanel vintage, don't they? Or other things where you're like, hey, these are my everyday clothes that I wear all the time. Super comfy. I like to work out with them. I like to do things and like create in them. And you got friends that you like to do things with and create. And we have so many options uh, to look at when it comes to clothes uh, and people. Isn't it fun? And I'm not a fashionista, but I can actually really dig clothes when I consider it about energetics and how they affect our bodies and how how we inter, um, interact, interact with them and like how our bodies interact with clothes. So I'm looking forward to talking more about that. Come on over to Inspire Choices Network to hear the rest of this show if you're listening on Facebook Live. And uh, we'll see you there. See you in the chat room in just a few minutes. We're going to head to a commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own Pleasure Zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza. Every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we are talking about relationships and we're talking about how sometimes we end up in relationships that are a little bit funko and we don't know why, just like buying clothes from like, I don't know, a website. So you go on to some site like I did to buy my wedding gown and it was like a big crock of poo. And I went and bought it this crazy thing took five months to show up I think it was like five months later it arrived in May I was married in December and when it arrived it was the biggest hot joke in the house I put it on the thing was see-through and it was made of some weird stretchy flannel material and it looked nothing like the photo thank you China and some sweatshop with children and that was not my best choice but I was being frugal, not always the best choice, not always the best choice with friends either. Why be frugal? Why not have quality over quantity? So I'm looking at quality friendships over quantity friendships as well. We could have 5,000 friends on Facebook and it don't mean nothing because guess what? This is not necessarily quality, it's quantity. And when I look at the clothing that I have in my closet too, which I, again, not a lot of clothing, I like to go for things that I feel are quality. I mean, I'm not buying um, Chanel, but I would love to be able to say, I do have friends who are my Chanel friends, my Chanel um, vintage 1950s Chanel dresses. I have those in my life and super grateful for having them. And then I have, um, 
and they wouldn't you wouldn't look at that and go well that's an interesting t-shirt but that's my chanel number five vintage friend too at the same time sometimes they have like dual purpose too so what do i mean by these things like what's a chanel number five vintage dress friend that's that dress that you have in your closet that you look at and you're like damn that is one hot piece of material and when i think about it my body gets turned on and my body is so happy and my body is like hmm, where can i wear that that looks fun wish i could wear that right now wish i could go out on a date or just walk around and strut around my i don't know backwoods area down you know down the streets of marmara because that's a fun place to strut around in a chanel number five vintage dress and just strut around uh, it's not really chanel number five that's a perfume but a chanel vintage dress walking down the streets walking down the back laneways of the countryside in my chanel vintage dress that's lovely i think it's lovely to be able to do that and have these things that are just they make you feel so great that they're around um, and that you look at them and you admire them too, right? So do you have those friends in your life that you just admire and you like to like have them in your closet because you admire it and you're like, yeah, man, that's beautiful. I don't get to wear you very often. In other words, maybe I don't get to see you or talk to you very often. Man, I get to admire that piece that I got in my closet because I know I'm going to have that for a very long time. And there are ones in that closet, I bet, that you have that are ones that are that kind of quality that have been around a long time. And if you don't, sweets, I hope you find some because everybody needs one of those, at least one of those friends in their life that is like a Chanel dress that's in your closet for life. So we have some of those, you know, in that giant pile of clothes, you're going to have some stuff that's like maybe not the most practical in terms of they might not even live in the same country as you or the same city, like you don't necessarily get to see them or their life is completely different. You work different hours, you don't even get to talk to each other, but there's still a loving and a kindness and you know it and you feel it. Um, those are the ones that you just kind of keep in your closet and you admire for a while because they're quality and they're awesome and you keep them around. So we also have these other ones that we do need to clear out. The ones, like I was saying before, they don't necessarily fit. Like, uh, you look at them and you're like, oh, I didn't even know why I bought this size to um, leotard. I do not wear a full piece leotard. What was I thinking? Just because it was $3.99, I took up this leotard for no particular reason. And we do that. We do it in life too. We're just like, let's be friends. And sometimes it's from trauma. And sometimes we buy clothes from trauma as well. We're just like, I need to feel better about myself. So we buy these trauma clothes to try and make ourselves feel better. And we sometimes take on relationships to try and make ourselves feel better, but they end up not really doing anything for us at all. So, and that's okay. It's when you look at it and you're like, hey, maybe this relationship belongs to somebody else and let it loose. Whether it's a lover or a friend, you still can let it loose. And so, like I was saying before, how do you let it loose is thank you so much for being in my life. I appreciate all of it and I let you go. So you can do it energetically um, if you want to connect with them and say, I want to thank you for being in my life and now I'm letting you go. You can do that too. It's not necessarily necessary. A lot of people at that point and stage in the relationship, like that size two full piece leotard knows I'm never going to wear it. It knows it is conscious, consciously aware that it's a misfit for me. So it knows, you know, it's that somebody has, you know, the choice to go, oh, I'm actually going to like, just like let this go. And I don't really have to say anything about it. It's just where it's at. It's, and that's cool. And you will probably maybe never wear that size two full piece leotard again. And that's okay. It, it was there. It was an interesting choice. It was an interesting creation. Cool. So when you make some room in your closet, now you're like, wow, I've cleared out those size two neon leotards, full piece leotards that just were like, whoa, what an interesting choice. Then you can move on and go, oh, I wonder what I would like to put in this closet that would add some like joy to my body when I put it on and when I wear it. And relationships absolutely can add joy to your body. Guess who's having the relationships? Your body has relationships with the people. Um, uh, and if you pass on and you are like me and wacky and like love entities and like communicate with the dead, then you might even have some fun when, you know, somebody passes on to still communicate with them. 
they could still be in your closet. So it's not that they just disappear because they've left their body. And you can fill in that space with all kinds of all kinds of people. You can organize it, right? You can be like, oh, here's my vintage friends. They're over here. And I, I like a good organization too. Here's my vintage friends. And, and here's my everyday friends. And here's my these friends. So here's some categories that I came up with because I wrote them down. And so I'm just going to take a quick check at my list because, you know, I'm good, but I don't memorize everything. So, um, so the ones that no longer fit, ones that you're still trying on, sometimes you'll find in your pile that there may be things that you're like, well, like those size eight pants I was talking about, you might go, hmm, maybe one day, maybe not, maybe one day they'll fit. And you just kind of really like them. So you wanna go back once in a while and check them out. So you're not burning the bridges on those, but some of the other ones you might be burning bridges on like the size two neon leotard that you're like wondering why you ever even looked at it. That one, you know, you're gonna let it go and you may never go back and test it out again. That's totally cool. And you can even love that leotard as weird as it may have been for you and still never go back to it. The beautiful thing about letting it go is to like have that gratitude. Like, thank you for being in my life for whatever, however long you were in my life for and I let you go. Um, it is so, you know what happens? We tend to be like a bit ownershipy with people in general. I mean, we even, it's like my friend, it's like we own them, right? My husband, my boyfriend, my child. Um, we use these ownership words with people and sometimes releasing that can get rid of a lot of the control impact that our relationships have. <laughs> we all do it on some level, whether it's intentional, unintentional, subtle, obvious, whatever it happens to be, there's always some kind of like there is always a little undercurrent of that. And it is something that we can consciously work on and work towards not having as much of. Um, even worrying about person, a person is, is a type of control as well. So it's weird. We'll talk about that in another show though. So are these relationships still something that you might wanna try on? Are they comfortable enough? Are they interesting enough? Are they curious enough that you might want to test them out once in a while? And they might be. So they're going to be in the maybe pile. So you've got to definitely know we're going to get rid of that giant, you know, full piece yellow size two leotard. Chuckle, see you later. And we're just going to put that away. We're going to have these ones that maybe I want to try out once in a while. They might fit again in the future. Who knows? We'll just keep them because we really like them. And then they're ones that you're not really sure if they'll fit, but you're also like, I don't like it enough to try it on again. So you'll let that go too. So I hope you guys are kind of getting where I'm coming from with my concept of spring cleaning relationships and how I've related it to clothing, because that's how my brain works. I like to relate things to other things and I like to see how things are <laughs> interrelated and how I can compare them to uh, other things that are more familiar to us so that we can have uh, an easier time understanding it and not necessarily take things too personally because you know we're, I know that I in my life have been awesome at taking things ultra personally. Um, when I make it so, so personal that I'm like, oh my God, it must be because I said something or did something, this person unfriended me or doesn't wanna to talk to me. Maybe I did. And if they don't have the courage to tell me, that's their choice. And if they do have the courage to tell me, awesome. Because most of the people who have the courage to tell me will work it out with me and we usually stay friends. Some of my best friends, I've had some really weird <laughs> entertaining conversations with where we're like, yeah, you really pissed me off. Cool, awesome, let's talk about it. And it's when that is available, that is such a gift. It's like saying, hey, those clothes didn't fit me for a few minutes, it was really uncomfortable. I adjusted them, I took off the belt, and now, oh, phew, fits, thank goodness. I found a way, I adjusted a little, and things fit a little. It doesn't mean about compromising your beliefs or who you are, it's that you can just sometimes move a little, adjust a little. It, if you move your foot forward, does it mean you've changed your entire being? No, you just adjusted your body a little bit, moved your weight around, and found a new position that's gonna help you be feeling stronger, maybe more confident, maybe more um, 
I don't know what's the word like flexible too. So sometimes we just need to do a little adjustment so that we feel confident, comfortable, flexible, and good. And it's not personal. And even when it is personal, like I was saying before, even if it is personal and a person chooses not to tell you what or why it's personal, that's their shit, not yours. Um, if they are willing to talk to you about it and work it through, blessings, they're probably somebody worth taking that foot step forward and seeing what it feels like to adjust and move into um, the relationship more. So what I want you to know is this applies both to friendships, family, work relationships as well, and lovers. I'm just simplifying this down to more of a friendships um, scenario because a lot of times when it comes to relationships and sex, all of a sudden penetration occurs or some kind of like mouth on vulva, like whatever happens to be the scenario, some sexual interaction occurs and all of a sudden our hormones go wild and everything becomes personal. But if we can break it down and look at it a little differently, we can start to see that maybe it's not so personal. It just doesn't fit or it's not the style that really works for you. When you wear it, it doesn't resonate with your body and your body doesn't like sing joyous songs. And you would like to have all of that be super joyful for your body. I would, I don't know, maybe you would too. So we're gonna talk more about that, kind of deciphering the relationships and looking at them from the clothing perspective. When we come back from this commercial break, you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we are talking about relationships and spring cleaning of relationships, just like we spring clean anything, you know, kind of getting out those cobwebs, those nooks and crannies, finding all that old stuff that might have gone funk. Time to clean it out and clear it out. 
you know, I get inspired because closets inspire me. And <laughs> whether it's my clothing closet or even uh, the other day, I was cleaning up this utility closet that we have. And um, I don't know, I just was like, yeah, no longer require this, no longer require that. I chucked away like an entire garbage bag full of things that were like, no, there, nobody could use them. And then I found the equivalent of a garbage bag full of stuff to give away to some kids I know. And then I found stuff for storage and it was fun. I love going through everything and then just feeling like a sigh of relief that things are on track. I also discovered that I have like 20 bars of soap from like really cool handmade soap people in my area. And, and I think I like have this, I have a weird thing for handmade soap. I love it. Um, and I, I was, I don't know what, what I was doing, but I have all these like amazing smells. I have like one that's specifically for when you're gardening. I have other ones for calming and they're all like these beautiful, uh, these beautiful creations. So I was like, whoa, I've completely forgot that I'd been like a maniac um, for some reason collecting soap. Yep. So I got like 20 bars of gorgeous soap. So yes, if you ever come visit me, you'll get to use some gorgeous soap. Um, I just had visions of gorgeous soap and I was like, oh, I want to like send samples to my friends and they can have gorgeous soap too. It's so lovely. So <laughs> it's, um, it's super fun. So when I was looking at the, the, you know, what are some of the things I have in my closet? I have like everyday clothes that are comfy, like whether it's my jeans or my sweatpants, it's things I'm, I'm like utilizing for a useful, functional uh, purpose, everyday life and their survival needs. They are ones that I need to stay alive. And I got a, I got a couple friends. I got, I probably say I got like a handful of friends that I would qualify as my they're both vintage and they're also like the quality that I require for everyday life. And they're like the ones who are like my cheerleaders and they're the ones who require me to cheer them on sometimes too. Um, so it's all like a super mutual thing, right? I'm probably their um, jogging pants too. And they're my jogging pants. So I like to have uh, you know, like a handful of jogging pants around. I don't need 27 pairs of jogging pants. I need five really good pairs or 10 really good pairs of jogging pants or, or jeans that are super comfortable, practical um, things that I will keep around that I will utilize and they will utilize me on a regular basis. And I like the feel of them. So those are ones that, you know, you might even find you have like 20 or 30 and how cool for you if you do have like 20 or 30 friends that you can rely on on a regular basis. But I don't know that that's so common for people. I don't know, put it in the comments, let me know. How many like of your friends do, would you say are ones that you could like rely on that they're like your your jeans or your your comfy clothes of the day? And I'm just curious because I think that so many of us maybe only have like a handful. And if you do have more, that's cool. And it's just like clothes. Like, do you really need 25 pairs of, of uh, sweatpants? Not really. Like, even if you wore them every day, like eventually you do laundry, don't you? So you're going to have them come up again. So look at some of these things too. And some of your comfy friends, you know, some things might start to wear and tear on them, right? Like you could be wearing them out too. You could be really relying on them like a pair of sweatpants that you wear every day for the entire time of COVID. And you're like, whoa, I've, I might've worn that pair of sweatpants out and there's no elastic left and there's holes everywhere. And I can't even cover my butt with these anymore because they're falling down. And you're like, wait a second, do I need to clean these up and clear these up? Maybe make some adjustments, get them to fit better. I'd like to keep these pair because they're comfy but I also need to do something about how they fit. So when it comes to a relationship like that, where things maybe have gone too far, maybe you've worn them out, maybe they've worn you out, create some boundaries around it. That would be the structure, the restructuring of the garment, right? So putting in a new elastic, that's part of restructuring. 
fixing some of those holes, restructuring, changing them into from pants to shorts. Like that's also a restructuring. And that is all things that are like the boundaries that would come with relationships. So just knowing, wait a second, you know what? I can spend this much time. I have, I can handle this emotionally or whatever. And restructuring It's a kindness to you. It's a kindness to them. So you're not wearing them out. They're not wearing you out. So you're not being each other's like super comfy pair of pants that gets worn to shreds. You're clear with each other. You have timelines and guidelines. Um, and um, my best of friends, we treat each other like professionals. And I love that because we're all professionals. So we're like, hey, let's schedule. And we actually schedule. And I, I like having that. But sometimes it's like random calls as well. But generally, it's like, I have time this time. And they're like, they get it, right? So I think I, I got pretty blessed with friends who get um, my lifestyle because they have similar lifestyles as like coaches and healers and things so they also need their space and if um, yeah, and so we can respect that from each other so cool stuff to know so I love scheduling friends <laughs> it's fun to schedule friends so when I look at these things it's like maybe you've worn some of these things out because they were comfortable Sometimes when you have, maybe take a little break on those. So they're not worn to shreds and maybe reevaluate. Do they need to be restructured? And if they do talk to those pair of pants and see what they'd like to turn into. Do they need a new elastic? Do they need to be cut into shorts? Like what needs to, what is required in order for you to have them stay in your closet and for you to be in their closet? Because it can go, um, it can actually be incredibly stressful to just have them sitting there and they're kind of falling apart and you're you're like I got this falling apart pair of pants they're kind of taking up space I kind of feel for them I kind of want to keep them but I'm not really sure what to do so part of it is to really just look and evaluate this and then have a discussion with those ones that are super comfortable I'm hoping that you have the courage to be able to have these conversations with them and sometimes it is it is being able to schedule and have time, especially people's lifestyles are not like where you can just randomly show up at the door anymore. Um, like we used to do in the eighties. I don't know. My dad did it all the time. He had like zero boundaries. And um, I never understood how he could just show up at somebody's door and expect them to open the door and for us to be visitors. But it was also apparently rude to deny people. So even if you were busy or doing something, you were supposed to open the door. Maybe it's a Serbian thing and it's cultural and there's no boundaries. I don't know. That's what I was, that's what I was part of. So I didn't really like it. I didn't like having to do that to people. So I prefer the scheduling and the actually making time so I can be present with the person. Um, and that to me is way more fun than, uh, than feeling not so present. So, so we've got the comfortable clothes and I love my comfortable clothes. And like I was saying, sometimes those comfortable clothes leave too, and that's okay too. So definitely see if there needs to be some restructuring. That's part of your spring cleaning is you look at things and you're like, does this need repairs? Does this need to be chucked out? Does it need to be cleaned? Lots of things need to be cleaned and cleared as well as part of spring cleaning, we clean and clear. And clearing is sometimes letting it go completely and clearing is sometimes bringing it up to get some fresh air. There might be some issues abound or underlying or there's this current of awkwardness and you just need to say something, get it out, bring it up, clear it out. If you're the one feeling awkward, bring it up. Don't always assume that the other person is going to know that you're feeling awkward. Um, and if you don't want to bring it up, cool. Maybe you just don't value the relationship enough to have anything change and that's okay the thing is is like sometimes people are too shy too scared too awkward but really when it comes down to it it's a choice is this person is this relationship valuable enough for you to feel uncomfortable enough to say what you need to say in order to have that relationship and sometimes you're just not there or you just don't want to and that's okay too so, um, well, I'm almost at my next break and we will be talking about, you know, what is, what are those vintage Chanel dresses that you have in your closet that you just sometimes look at and like, what's the value of keeping those around? Like, are they just taking up space? What's the value of them? And um, looking at as well, when you are, when you, after you've cleared it all out, 
do you need some other things? Like, do you need some time to wait before bringing some other things in? So we're going to look at like what happens after the clear out, because oftentimes we let go and then we have this pause and it can be a little daunting or overwhelming in a way where you're just like, oh, I just got rid of everything. I know because I've done it before in my life where I've seriously gotten rid of like almost everything I owned and just like walked off into the world and went, okay, let's start fresh and see what happens. Um, and it, it can be like, whoa, it can be freeing and it can be overwhelming at the same time. So we're going to look at uh, that, all of that sort of stuff. Um, we are going to head to our next commercial break. Before we do, though, I just want to remind you that there are over 300 episodes you can find of The Pleasure Zone. You can find them on inspiredchoicesnetwork.com, but you can also find them in any number of your favorite podcast places like Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, um, Apple, to, uh, Apple Podcasts. Like wherever you probably have a podcast or look for podcasts, you'll probably find the pleasure zone. So you can find um, so many resources there as well. And I recently, if you would, just do me a favor, go on to YouTube, search up the pleasure zone. I am I currently put up a, um, a channel just for the pleasure zone. And I would love if you would follow me on YouTube. Um, I'm, I just created it a week or two ago and I've organized all the shows. I'm, I'm still in a bit of the process of organizing all of my shows. I have another hundred or so to go um, into categories. So you can find categories. You could find things on BDSM if you just want to do that or relationships or energy and sex. And it's all categorized, easy to find. Um, I love files. So it's really helpful for me to have a whole of it in files. And I'd love for you to go over and follow me on YouTube under the Pleasure Zone radio. Thanks, guys. We're going to head to our next commercial. You're listening to the Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com now back to the program welcome back my sweet sweet pleasure seekers tonight we are talking about relationships and how we can spring clean them because hey why not let's do that so if you have been in reps with your relationships in the same way that you might have been in rut with your clothes in your closet this is a really fun a way to kind of approach the relationships in your life and start to spring clean them. We recently did a show on here where we looked at looking at your relationship uh, from a career perspective. We, as in me and my friend, also the owner of Inspired Choices Network, Christine McIver, a uh, really fun look at how you can, when you start into relationships of an intimate nature, especially how you can look at them from um, the perspective of um, approaching a career the same way you can approach a career. And so today we're looking at it from spring cleaning. We're making rooms so that you can go off into the world, use these approaches. You can use that approach that we talked about on the, on the, the show that we did about uh, business and relationships. It was like, is your career treating your, treating your relationships like you treat your career? I think we called it. Um, when, when you choose into relationships, you can ask that even about friendships as well. We did it geared mostly towards um, intimate relationships of an intimate and sexual nature, but you can absolutely approach friendships that way too. So uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was these vintage 
relationships that you might have, these vintage clothing, beautiful Chanel dresses that you might have in your closet. And how and why do you keep them around? Like I, I do have some vintage relationships that um, I have friends that I've uh, like, that were probably my roommate from university that I've known for oh, like 25 years. Uh, roommates for years um, and she moved away she lived in England then she moved in to Australia um, but she's like my vintage Chanel and I don't see her often and I so I don't get to wear that dress very often but when I do it's like it always fits and it always looks good on me and I hope I hope too that I always look good on her too and we hardly ever even get a chance to even talk or whatever but um, once in a decade we kind of come back to each other and find each other um, and it's fun to be able to have people like that. So <laughs> um, I, for a long time, I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't really think that I had people like that. But as I started to look at the show, I'm like, I actually do have some vintage relationships. Um, and they are, when I do wear them, it's a rare wear. And when I wear them, it's like a very fun experience. And I know that it's not gonna be long lasting. And I know that I'm gonna put it away in the closet for quite a while after, but when it comes back out, it's lovely to just have it there. So, you know, not everybody needs to have a vintage Chanel dress relationship. It's just one of those ones that might be in your closet that you don't really wanna get rid of because, it's for you, it adds elegance and beauty to your life, having it around or knowing that it exists. And I kind of like that. And I also feel like we have some other, you know, we have some other relationships. I talked about some of the comfortable ones that we wear every day. We have those super uncomfortable ones that no longer fit, like that I also had mentioned earlier in the show. We have those work clothes, those play clothes. And then what we also have is probably a whole like range of things that we never even think of as clothes but they're there right like it could be scarves and you're like but I, I never really thought of them as part of my clothes but when but they're there for you and you're like oh I could add these to my life and they could spruce something up so you might have some of these things too that are, are kind of like scarves or clothes that love you but you didn't know that you know they they're like they look great on your body but you're like really <laughs> your brain doesn't compute that that actually like looks great on you and there can be like a bit of a dissonance going on a cognitive dissonance you're like how does that make sense but it works and so i do have a few of those friends i've noticed recently in my life as well where i'm like wow i have this arrangement of people who like specifically tell me how much they admire and love me and I'm like really you do like what and it's kind of it kind of like it's surprising and funny and strange to me um and I enjoy it and it's like having those scarves that sit in my drawer that I just never really think well you're part of my outfits but you're there and you can also go through those I mean sometimes you just sit there they don't take up a lot of space really they're just uh, like additional beautiful things that kind of add to your life every once in a while and you're like maybe I'll just keep those around. They're accessories. <laughs> so, and sometimes those accessories become something that you end up turning something into them. So you've had a whole bunch of beautiful scarves and you're, you know, you take them to somebody and you create a dress out of them. Um, there could be a collection like that, that you'd like to have um, some accessories that just, you know, they beautify your life. And you're like, I didn't even know I didn't even know that they love being on me so much. So I encourage you to look at this at, in your spring cleaning time. And remember for all of it, whether it's staying or leaving, remember to have gratitude for all of it. Thank you so much for being in my life. I'm so grateful for everything you contributed. Even some of those ones that look really bad on you, like that GIMP outfit that you didn't even know you had in your closet and you didn't know why you bought it. And you were like, why? I didn't even know I was into this at the time. And you're like, why? Well, just get rid of that GIMP outfit. Um, that, even that, just be like, thank you for being in my life. And I'm gonna let you go now. I'm really grateful that you were there. So even the ones that were abusive, even the ones that were great, even the sociopaths, the psychopaths, the ones who were awesome to you, the ones who were not so awesome to you, thank you so much. They contributed to who you are here and now. And they were part of your choices and what led you to here and now. So thank you for all of them. And, and also showing you you know, a different way of thinking possibly, 
and something else that you could choose and opening you up to new possibilities if you choose that. I currently don't have a show listing for next week, which always makes things fun and interesting. So I'll have a few things posted for you guys for May should be all up and ready in the next few days. So you can get excited about everything happening in May. And remember that when you're doing your spring cleaning, you know, if you are getting rid of some of these things, keep them out of your closet. You know, they don't need to come back. <laughs> so have a great day. Thank you for today. listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.